portable hyperbaric chamber is an air impermeable, acoustically transparent PVC bag into which we place victims who are suffering from severe acute mountain sickness, or AMS, high altitude cerebral edema, or HACE, or high altitude pulmonary edema, or HAPE. Portable hyperbaric chambers effect a physiological descent when they are inflated to a significant pressure above the pressure of the ambient atmosphere. In this way, they simulate a lower altitude, thereby increasing the partial pressure of oxygen in the patient's arterial blood and producing clinical improvement. It is essential that as many members as possible of a high altitude trekking party practice inflating and deflating the portable hyperbaric chamber before it is used in a wilderness setting. It is important to remember that use of the chamber is not a substitute for prompt descent where this is possible. There are several portable hyperbaric chambers available commercially. This video demonstration, which was prepared by medical students completing the special study module in high altitude medicine at the National University of Ireland, Galway, uses the portable altitude chamber, or PAC, which was developed by Dr. Jim Duff. The chamber is transported in a light protective bag, which also includes a foot pump, a connecting hose, and a repair kit. An external anchor point allows the chamber to be secured on steep ground. The chamber should be rolled out on as flat a surface as possible, which should be free from rocks or other sharp objects. The pack has three valves, an inlet valve, a variable pressure release valve, and an auto release valve. One end of the hose is connected to the inlet valve, and the other to the foot pump. The variable pressure release valve is then closed. Care must be taken when opening the chamber not to damage the heavy circumferential zipper. Open the zipper completely to make it easier for the victim to enter the chamber. To prepare the operating area, sleeping mats should be placed under and inside the chamber. An open sleeping bag should also be placed inside the chamber. The chamber itself should be positioned in the shade during the daytime or covered with sleeping bags at nighttime when temperatures at altitude may fall to below zero. A pillow is also placed in the chamber for the victim's comfort. Before the victim is helped into the chamber, the operator should explain how the chamber works and how to equalize middle ear pressure by performing the Valsalva maneuver. The victim should wear a hat, as the cold incoming air may otherwise be uncomfortable. You should ask the victim to flex his separated knees and hold the bag off his face as it is being inflated. An altimeter may be placed into the inside pocket window to confirm that the chamber has been fully pressurized. The circumferential chamber zipper is then closed gently by straddling the bag. The chamber is initially inflated rapidly by depressing the pump by hand. When the chamber wall is tensioned, the chamber is pumped steadily by foot to pressurize it. A pair of ski poles may be used for balance. The pumping tasks should be rotated between different members of the trekking party. It is important to communicate with the victim at all times and to maintain eye contact. If the victim experiences ear pain, the variable pressure release valve is opened by rotating it anti-clockwise using the fingers only and pumping is stopped until the pain resolves. Once the chamber has been fully inflated to a pressure of 2 psi, the automatic pressure release valve will begin to hiss like a pressure cooker. Air is felt as it emerges from the chamber. When the chamber wall becomes tense, the rate of pumping should be slowed to give the victim time to equalize his middle ear pressure. Pumping should be continued at the rate of once every five seconds until deflation of the chamber begins. If possible, the head of the chamber should be elevated to 30 degrees in cases of hape and haste. 
A simulated pressure descent graph on the side of the pack displays the actual pressure inside the chamber when it has been fully inflated to 2 psi. To deflate the chamber, first cease pumping and open the variable pressure release valve by rotating it anti-clockwise. If the victim complains of ear pain while the chamber is being deflated, the variable pressure release valve must be closed and the chamber reinflated by pumping it until the pain subsides. The victim should also be encouraged to yawn or swallow. Deflation usually takes about three minutes. When the chamber wall loses most of its tension, the zipper should be opened gently but completely to avoid being damaged as the victim emerges from the chamber. The victim should be assisted as he emerges from the chamber. This clip shows the interior of the portable hyperbaric chamber from the perspective of the victim being treated. Are you okay? Yep. How are your ears? They're fine. The pump is disconnected from the chamber and the variable pressure release valve is then closed. After removing moisture from the inside of the chamber with a towel, the chamber should be allowed to air dry. The chamber should then be zipped up but not completely and rolled up from the front end, taking care not to crease the windows. The victim is now ready for further treatment or descent. Additional cycles of simulated descent and patient reassessment are continued as needed until either the patient's clinical status has improved enough to not require further hyperbaric treatment, or the patient is capable of supervised descent having been previously incapacitated. Guidelines suggest that severe AMS requires at least one hour of treatment, HAPE typically requires two to four hours of treatment, and HACE may require as many as four to six hours of hyperbaric treatment.